Hey guys, welcome back to Grain Free Homestead. I'm Stephanie, and today we're gonna do something a little different. We are going, I'm gonna show you how I process our beef tallow, our beef fat that we get from when we um, get our whole cow from um, a local farmer every year. So what we do is I render down the fat, the tallow, and it does take um, several processes of this, um, but once I render it down, I uh, use that tallow. It's like a solid white pure tallow after it's been rendered so many times. I use that to make homemade soap. So it's a, a, tal a pure tallow lye soap, and then we use that I make bar soap out of it and we use it like, you know, um, to wash our hands or in the bathtub, the shower, and that's what we use for our soap. So, um, a lot of times when you buy a cow from a local farmer or a half a cow, there are things that you can get that you don't realize you can get. They're not listed like on their sheet of paper that they have. They're not listed on that. So sometimes you have to ask and things like organ meats, um, the soup bones and your fat and then we're going to go through the process together of, of the stages of what the tallow looks like and at the end of this video uh, we're going to make soap out of it and then you're going to see what it looks like so first things first when you get your beef fat um, it says it right here it's kind of hard to read beef fat it will have little pieces of meat on it see it there and I'll flip it on the back. But you, you can see that it's mostly fat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open these up and I like to work with it when it's frozen um, or really, really cold um, and it cuts so much easier. So we're gonna cut these open. I chunk them up and as I'm chunking it, I cut the any kind of red meat pieces or um, meat that may be left on there, I go ahead and cut that off. So we're gonna get to cutting away on this. Um, I do use a crock pot, so as I cut it, it goes into the crock pot. Crock pot's already on low, and then um, I'll show you uh, where we go from there. So I've got my fat cut up and cubed. I just cube it up. I make sure that when I'm cutting it up, I try to get as much of the impurities, the any kind of blood or vessels or tendons, anything that would be in there that's not fat, I try to go ahead and cut all that out and that's less rendering time that you'll have to do later. So I'm gonna turn this around and show you guys what it looks like in the crock pot all cubed up. So here is the cubed up beef fat it is in the crock pot on low and I am going to do what's called a wet rendering the wet rendering just allows a lot of the impurities 
and like the gristly pieces, if there's any kind of meat, it allows that to settle to the bottom. And I'm going to probably do three renderings anyways, maybe four, I have done four before. It just kind of depends on the, you know, the quality of your fat. Um, I don't get just the leaf lard, so I get the tallow for the whole beef. So there's going to be um, little pieces of stuff in there. So in order to do a wet rendering, you do need to add water and salt. So um, this is not a large crock pot. This is um, pretty small. So I'm only gonna add a cup and a half to two cups of water. And that water helps to keep the fat from burning because you do not want to burn your fat. And then the next thing that we're going to add is salt. I have pink Himalayan salt on hand, that's what I have. Um, I'm not going to do an exact measure, but a couple tablespoons is what I'm guessing. So I'm just gonna pour that in there. Now as it starts to cook and melt down a little bit, I'll stir it up. This will need to go for several hours. The tallow will begin to change and when it looks to be, you know, that clearish yellow color, like almost like broth, that's what you're looking for in this, in this process. All right, I'm gonna get the lid on it and we're gonna let it start cooking down. So it was super early the next morning and I didn't get a chance to show you guys before I started recording, but basically the crock pot was still two thirds of the way full and there's a lot of grisly pieces. Um, it had cooked overnight, and this is what was left. So I went ahead and used some cheesecloth in a strainer and let it go through that into the bowl underneath. And I'll show you here in a second um, kind of what's going through the cheesecloth. And I actually needed two bowls here. So that's what it looks like going through. It almost just looks like broth, like chicken broth or something. And um, I'll just finish that out. I'll keep scooping it till I get it all. And then we'll move on to the next step. So this is actually that juice like that I was straining from the cheesecloth. It went into these two containers that you see me messing with here. And I refrigerated them until they hardened. It usually takes two to three hours. Um, sometimes you can do it overnight, whatever's convenient. And this, once you pop it out, that is the like impurities, the beefy stuff still coming to, you know, um, straining out of the fat. So here I'm gonna scrape it off. I like to use a knife. And you can kind of see it's nice and white underneath all of that. So I just scrape the whole thing. Um, be sure to get that really brown part because that's where all the smell and um, beef is gonna be. And what's left behind is like a pure white tallow. Now I will render this down. I will do the same process probably two more times. So that'll make it a total of three renderings. Um, and I usually just go by whether or not I still smell beef because I don't want my soap to smell like beef. So I'm still scraping the sides and I'm just making sure I'm getting all like the gelatin um, and things like that off of my tallow. It just makes the rendering go much smoother and faster. Okay, so my tallow is uh, pretty clean here. So I'm just gonna cut this up into smaller pieces and get these back into the crock pot. And we're gonna do the rendering process again. So the crock pot is on low. I'm going to get all of my cleaned up, scraped off tallow into the crock pot. I do have another bowl here, that smaller bowl. Um, I'm going to scrape it and get it cleaned up and get that in the crock pot as well.
As you can see, I'm handling the tallow quite a bit. Um, and that's one of the reasons that uh, beef tallow makes great soap. It is a harder fat, it doesn't melt easily. Um, so when you're using it as a soap, it's not just melting and going down the drain. It's a harder fat, so it's perfect for soap. So we're to the point now where we're gonna do our rendering again, which means we also add our water and add our salt the same way that we did the first time around. So I actually go through this rendering process one more time after this, just to be sure to get all the smell, the beef smell out. And each time I do this, I ladle the fat off of the top and it kind of separates when you put it in the fridge and you get that nice hard tallow um, each time. Okay, so right now we're in the process of where our tallow has already been rendered. Um, several times, three to four times is usually what it takes to render the tallow down to get all the impurities and that kind of beef smell out of it. So now we're moving on to the actual process of making our tallow soap. So what we've got going on here is in the crock pot, we are getting our tallow melted down and we're getting this up to 100 degrees. So I've got my thermometer here. So that's to check the temperature of the tallow. I have my lye measured out in a, just a disposable cup. Um, this is pure lye. I got it off of Amazon. I could not find it in like a tractor supply type store. I've looked in several places, even like hardware stores, and finally ended up just getting it off of Amazon, and that's where I found it. But it's 4.2 ounces of lye. It's a powder, in case you've never used it. I like to measure it out in this so I'm not pouring the whole bottle um, into my mixture. Once you get your tallow up to heat, up to 100 degrees, um, what you're gonna do is you're going to mix the lye, which is 4.2 ounces, with 12.16 ounces of just water. Um, and you do need to go outside for that. So that's why I have gloves on and safety goggles because it will um, have a reaction um, and kind of like it steams and um, I mean it's pretty cool but um, you don't, I don't I don't feel safe doing it inside I just wouldn't want those fumes in my house so we're just gonna go outside and mix those um, but you want to wait to do that until you're getting close on your temperature on your tallow Hey guys so next we're gonna go ahead um, our tallow is getting close to being heated up uh, again you want it to 100 degrees if possible that's what you want to work with so we've just got an empty ice cream container. Um, this is a pretty small batch. So normally you could use like a big bucket or something like that when you mix these two together. But this is about the smallest batch that you can make. So we're just using this because we're gonna throw this away anyways. So what we're gonna mix together is we're gonna take our 12.16 ounces of water. It's already pre-measured. Um, and what you wanna remember when you're mixing lye is that you wanna pour the lye into the water, not the water into the lye. And so we're gonna take these two outside and we're gonna mix them up and we'll show you what it looks like. So we're outside now just because it makes fumes and like a steam and so I'd rather do that outside. So I'm gonna put my glasses on just to be safe. I already have my gloves and this was um, our water that was pre-measured and our pre-measured lye, it's a powdered lye. So we're gonna go ahead and mix that in and it'll get cloudy and it may steam and you probably will smell it. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of it. I can, I can feel the steam, it's actually getting warm. Try not to breathe it in. And then once it's not cloudy anymore, it's all incorporated, you wanna let that sit for 10 minutes. And I'm just gonna leave it sitting out here actually, because it is, it is actually heating up, it's getting warm. 
So I'm just gonna let it sit out here while I'm waiting. So you can see I kept mixing it maybe a whole minute it was mixed together and it's uh, kind of turned back to clear again. So now we're gonna just let this sit. It is warm to the touch. It's hot actually. A little bit hot, not scalding or anything. Um, we're gonna let that sit for 10 minutes and then we're gonna mix um, our fat together with this. Slowly just add your lye water mixture to your fat and it will instantly cloud up like you can see. Um, the best thing that you can have, the best tool you need for soap making is an immersion blender. It makes this so easy, but I'm gonna mix this and it does take probably about five minutes. Um, I sped this up a little bit, but what you wanna do is mix it until it gets to like almost a pudding consistency and that is called trace. Um, it's where you can kind of see the lines when you drag the, the blender around you start to see the lines and it will thicken really nice for you um, it's almost like a custard or a pudding um, that's kind of what I look for and you just keep moving it around in here um, until you get that kind of thick consistency it starts to stick to the, the blender some Here I'm adding some essential oils that I like. They are This is a floral um, scent that I was going for. I added geranium, uh, a blend called Citrus Bloom, and a little bit of lavender. Um, it does take quite a bit of essential oils. Um, if you're using like the 15 milliliter bottles, it'll take about a whole bottle um, to really get that scent mixed in with your soap there I have some lavender uh, flowers petals um, I mean the bloom that I had outside and I was just kind of experimenting here to see what it would do in the soap and the petals did not stay purple um, here it's just a cake pan that I have I've lined with wax paper um, this is usually how I do it um, just because I haven't bought any kind of a silicone mode specifically for soap um, so I'm going to fill this up. Just be real careful getting it going. Make sure your paper is lined everything on the sides. And you're almost done. You're going to have soap before you know it. You want to let this sit overnight um, for about 12, 14 hours, something like that. Um, I cover it with wax paper to keep the towel from sticking to it and then wrap it up in a good thick towel and that helps it to cool off evenly, um, you know, throughout the night. Um, if possible, don't let it sit too long. Um, I let it sit too long one time and it's like, um, it's just harder to get out of the cake pan. Okay guys, so it has been over 24 hours. The soap did sit in the pans longer than I wanted. Usually you want about 12 to 14 hours, um, but I didn't get to do that. So I got up early before I went to work 
and got them out of the pans and then I cut them when I got home. So I want to show you guys how much soap I got from um, the small batch and what it looks like and give you an idea of how much soap that you get. Here's the soap here. I, do, I did have four of these and I did give one um, to a friend to try. Um, and you can see the lavender did not say purple. It turned like an orangey color. Orangey, almost mm, like butterscotch color. You see that in there? Um, and I don't mind it. Uh, I do know I, I would like to grow some calendula. I know calendula keeps its colors really well um, and its properties in the soap. So this is it. I ended up with 10 bars. I probably could have done eight. There's a couple of them that are thin. But again, I don't use any special tools. I just use a knife um, and bread pans. I would like to get the silicone just pops right out. It's so, so easy. I would love to have um, maybe for as a gift or maybe Christmas time, I'm going to ask for a silicone uh, soap mold so that that comes out so much easier than having to use wax paper and stuff. But if you don't have it, a bread pan with wax paper does work. Um, I do kind of wrap these up. I just use this brown paper and actually the Dollar Tree has the best because it's a thinner paper it's not super thick but the thin paper folds on there really nice so if you know if you're gonna make up a little basket with maybe some jellies um, pickles or relishes pepper jelly um, I like to throw soaps in there um, and I just use Baker's Twine um, you know there's brown there's all different colors of Baker's Twine that's what I use uh, just to wrap it up and so you can store this now I will tell you, once you get it out, it is not ready to use. It needs to cure for a minimum of four to six weeks. So what I do is either put them in like a uh, old Tupperware container or just a plastic like Ziploc bag and I'll put them up in the closet and just kind of let them sit there for a couple months and then they're ready to use. So I actually, while these, um, by the time these are ready, I'll have another batch that's already curing. Um, but these soap bars last longer for us than the commercial soap that you buy, you know, at Walmart or the store or something. And um, that's it, guys. And it smells wonderful. Um, I put that geranium, citrus bloom, and a little bit of lavender essential oils in here. And it, and it just smells wonderful. I've also done one that was, um, I put lime oil and lemongrass. And that one was great, too. Very refreshing scent to it. I just didn't have any uh, right now. So I'm just, you know, experimenting with what I have. So that's the whole process for making homemade tallow soap. We went from our packaged tallow, our beef fat that we asked for when we bought our cow, all the way through the process of rendering it down to making the soap. And now we have bars of soap. So it is a wonderful soap. If you've never tried tallow soap, um, it's wonderful for the skin. It conditions the skin. It's a perfect fat um, for us to use on our hands. People with eczema, I know it does really well. Um, if you've never given it a try, try it. You know, um, we're all about using the, all of the parts, the whole cow, as much as we possibly can. And so we love making tallow soap. Um, you know, it's not that it's just free. It's just that, you know, I know what's in the soap. I know um, where it came from and it's just good soap, it smells good, and um, it lasts a long time too. Um, tallow is a harder fat, and it's perfect for soap. It doesn't just melt and go down the drain. Um, so give it a try, guys, honestly. Um, if, you, if you never have, um, I was a little nervous the first time because of the chemical reaction and the fumes, and it's actually kind of cool. You know, if you've got kids, get your kids involved. Do a science experiment, really. It's, it is really cool to do. Um, so that's it, that's how we make our soap. You know, if you guys enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Or if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It does really help us a whole lot. And um, we appreciate you guys. So we'll see you on the next one. Have a good week.